Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is my second video of the day. I had listened to the requests that people had about how I assembled this and what I did to put it together. And several people had mentioned that they'd like to see the process. So I videoed the process of me completing this journal. But I received a phone call right after I started and I didn't realize that the phone call, even though I let it go to voicemail, stopped the videoing process. So when I was when it was all said and done, I only had like the first two minutes of it. So my apologies, I had intended to show you how I created it, but instead I'll do a quick flip through of the completed journal. This spine is about three inches, and as you can probably see, this is a really fat journal. And it's a bit of a gator mouth, but not horribly. It's one of the th reasons when I'm making a big journal or a fatter journal, I like a soft spine because the soft spine allows you to lay the pages flat regardless of the bulk. But this still works. So, all right, I'm going to go through and fairly quickly show you what I did. I added the pieces that I made, pieces that were made for me, and then all the, the cards and notes that I had received um, since November 19th when I injured my leg. So I will go through pretty quickly. This was, and I'll explain anything that needs explaining. This is a paper bag that I just folded over to make a little bit smaller tuck spot. I have a paper bag. It was one of the pieces in the Happy Mail that I got. And I use it full length in another section. But here I just folded it over to create a pocket at the top, as well as a pocket right here, and then put some embellishment on it. And this, there were a couple cigar bands in there, and they're fairly thin, so what I did was I backed it with cardstock and then used it as a belly band here. And I had been gifted some great vintage ledger paper, and that's what this is. I just backed it with some card and used an embellishment. Oh, before I forget, the only bits that I had left, I think I showed you the bin when I started. Now I took out the bingo card because I would already done the writing in there. And I cut this flap off of the folio and I'll show you why in a minute. But this is all that's left of all those pieces. And I will save these to use for clusters and such later. But by and large, I used the vast majority of it, of the items that I was gifted. So thank you again for that. Okay, and all right, putting those aside. This was a plastic bag, cards got put inside, and I had started prior to prior to, to doing this or putting it together, I had started putting pieces in and then I decided to stop because people said they wanted to see it. And so this was one of the pieces that was in there originally. And this is a piece that I made again with some of that ledger. I used as much of that ledger as I could because it's really, really just great stuff. And here I used a piece of embossed paper that they gave me to make a band to put a tag over the top. I believe that was from Marilyn. And well, you know, most of this is self-explanatory. There was a really great embossed piece of cardstock in here that I wanted to use for a tag, so I exchanged it for some journaling paper. And again, more of that ledger turned into a cluster. And then this one, I haven't put anything in this yet, but I've got a couple ideas. This is the ledger made into a top pocket and a side pocket. It's just folded over basically. And it's super fragile, so what I did is I used packing tape on the back so that I could utilize it this way. And then a cluster made from some of the bits that were included. And some of the paper, is ju I just left it alone because it would be too bulky to use all of it and it would also um, tear because some of the paper is really fragile. Another bit of that ledger, and then I put a pocket on top of it, and I decided that the pocket, and oh, the shadows, eeks, it's the time of day. Let's see if that helps a bit. Now that just makes, no, that didn't help much. It just makes a line there, sorry. Okay, so this pocket glued on top, and then rather than having the pocket fit on the card, I just dropped it down a bit. And this tag was in was in one of the get well mails. So I put a bit of ephemera on it and tucked that in. I decided that all pockets don't have to fit entirely on their base. 
And this was the, I don't know if you remember, if you, if you saw the previous video, the envelope that had been closed. So I just turned that into a journaling card. And this, these dies were just solid cardstock dies. And I just inked and embossed them with Seth after vintage beeswax embossing powder. And another envelope decorated and then the card. Oh, here you go. Here's that same paper bag, but this time I added a bit on the front and just a few more pieces. She had done this card itself and I just added something to spread it out. And then there's a pocket at the top of that bag. And here is some die uh, window frame die cut, spe not specimen slides. What are these things called? Oh, negatives. That's it. They used to have negative slides and I put a variety of die cut bits inside of it and just tucked it on there. And she had included, Marilyn had included with her Happy Mail, quite a bit of inked, stained, dyed paper. Just gorgeous. And so I, and quite a few die cuts. So I colored the die cuts and embossed them and put them on and then just put um, the mini whale tail that she included. And I believe that's a die and she also had included these, so I added that bit to it. And this is another, she'd included this die piece and I added the ledger and a label and then some of the die cuts that I had embossed. Same again idea here with notes and then this is the, one of the pieces I had shown that came that I had thought about putting in the signature but I decided made good journaling paper. And this one is a belly band idea by Eve Spade, who I believe is Creative Chickadee on YouTube and on Etsy. She is a friend of Gail Augustinelli's and she is an absolute sweetheart. And last year at the retreat, she had shared this idea and I'd just forgotten about it. So I resurrected it and used it as a card piece and I really, really like it. And this will trigger a squirrel that I'll show you at the very end because I was making one of these for my newest ideas book and that caused a whole nother squirrel. But anyway, I'll finish up with this. And here is um, a pocket that came. This is like inked and coffee dyed book page. And there was a border in there. I just cut one of the pieces off and then used one of the frame dies that she had included to put it on top to, I don't know, just make the, the border stand out a bit, I guess. And this was a report card where the parents sign that I loved. And this little cutie, she decided that she didn't want her parents to see the report card, I think. Or maybe she was in school and she's not pleased with the report card or something like that. So I made a cluster and just put this as a decoration because this glassine bag, or wax, it's actually not even glassine, I think it's a wax paper bag I used to put a letter or card in. And here was a combination. She had included a couple bags that she'd dry embossed. And then I just inked the top of it and added a cluster that she had made it. And I added a couple pieces to that cluster and used that as a, a place to put another note. And this one had, oh, and here, this one had a couple little daffodil stamps, which I was really thrilled to see because they're absolutely perfect for my daffodil journal. And I swung by an estate sale this morning and I saw, I got um, some note cards and in the note cards were two little daffodil, uh, I don't even know what these are, calling cards, I guess. Anyway, they're really, really cool. But I was pretty thrilled about that. So I added, she had this faux leather circle and I added a die and she included some labels, I guess, that say expect great things with different stamped on different paper. And so I just put that together and tucked it in there. I didn't decorate every piece because some of the paper is just so pretty it doesn't need it. And I did want to leave some room to write the story when I'm ready to do that. And I also included some pieces that I had been gifted that were ready-made. This one wasn't from Marilyn, it was from someone else. But And I couldn't bring myself to clothes this because it says birch bark and bits heat bonded to paper just because it's just so very cool. I, I wanted that to stay stay out. Here is that border, that one piece I cut off, turned it into a cluster and tucked, made it into a tuck spot for that note card. And here is a tuck spot again using some of that, 
oh, you know, a long time ago out there. I'm just trying to blank on what they're called. It was a round system, and we had slide mounts, I guess. Slide mount, maybe that's it. Anyway, I added that, a die, Tracy label, onto some of that cool paper that she had gifted me. And in a couple places, when I have lace scraps, I'll just make a whole bunch of little uh, paper clip tops, basically. And I just grab those from my bin to hold things that needed to be held into place. And this, this was a bit of Happy Mail that I had received, too, and I tucked that in there. And here, I like to use envelopes and such as centers when possible. And here's another piece of that ledger. I used every bit of that ledger that I could just because it was so stinking cool. And this one's from 1903. Just put the a die on the front and tucked it in this little pocket. And I like doing that and with the center of signatures, putting envelopes and such in there so that I can close them if I choose to, if I don't want strings dangling. And another pocket. And this is one of the Oh gosh, a lot of people do them. Origami boxes, but I think I just glued this one down. I did. Oh no, there it is. An origami box. So I included that in here, but I did something wrong here. Well, I've opened it up. I will have to fix that later. There we go. And this was an envelope, but I just put it on its side to use it as a tuck to hold these really cool playing cards that she had sent, Marilyn had sent. And here, a combination of just pieces that were included in the package turned into a decoration. And that's the back of that birch bark. More ledger, this one from 1937. And this was a science experiment. On there it says, from 1909 physical science lab notes. And I just thought it was entirely too cool. So I saved that bit indicating what it was from and both sides of that paper, just because I really liked it. And then the rice paper, it's so thin and it's so pretty, I just kind of left it alone. Uh, the library card pocket and this eco dyed paper and this bit of well, printed ribbon, I thought went pretty well together because of the yellow. So I just turned it into a journaling card and tucked that inside. And here's another one of those, you know, it's got a top pocket and then it's got a side pocket with a different kind of ledger. There were several different kinds of ledger included, and I just really, really liked it. Here is the notepad that Marilyn had made, kind of the offshoot of a Jib and Neary idea. And I made its own belly band and tucked it over the top. <coughs> Pardon me. And one of the embellishments Marilyn had sent. And here, this was a piece of calendar that I had put inside, and I used one of the mini whale tails and punched a hole in it and included one of the little jingle bells that she had put on the original folio journal. And this is just an embellishment that she had sent. I added some vintage beeswax and a couple little labels to just change it up. Here is that really cool packing paper, and I just added a I put a piece behind it and sewed it on so that all those little holes wouldn't catch. And then I made, with some of that glittery paper that she created, I used Tim Holtz ink and Seth After Vintage Beeswax embossing powder and framed a little paper bit that she'd sent and put the whole thing together to make just a little itty bitty notebook to put inside this pocket. And another tag, envelope, I think I showed that the other day, card in here. And I combined these two pieces and added a die for the top to turn that into a little bit of a cluster. And then I used the leftover fabric, not fabric, this is fabric, but the leftover paper pieces to make a tearaway scratch pad kind of a thing. And here is one of the two pieces. Oh, I also used the beeswax that she had sent. And I'm curious, those of you who live in hotter climates, you know, like say Arizona or New Mexico or that kind of Texas, even parts of Texas, I'm wondering if it gets warm enough in the house if this will melt. But anyway, I really loved the effect that that gave on top of tissue paper. I don't know how well it films on camera, but um, I really liked it. And I just used, and to use the beeswax, what I did is I took some parchment paper and laid these items, these unwaxed items, in the par 
parchment paper, put a couple of these little waxy pellets on top, close the parchment paper up so it was like a parchment paper sandwich, and then heat it, heated it with my iron. And it gives you this really cool vintagey sheen. I really like the way it turned out. And just tucked those in here, this large envelope that I cut in half to make um, a section of the signature. And this was one of the tags I had mentioned that I'd probably take the tags apart, and I did, and I used them all because they were just cool. And here is a tuck spot. I had a letter. I put it somewhere, and it'll go inside there. And more journaling spaces. And then this is the sci more of that scientific notes. And here is a pa piece of eco-dyed paper that was included. And... Oh, you know what? I forgot. I'd forgotten that I'd turn this into a pocket. Well, I can tuck a card or something in here because this is a larger piece that I folded up and folded back on itself to make a pocket on the top. And here is what I used for the closure for this. I took a couple of the little bits that she'd included and a butterfly die and combined them with the leftover bit of lace and made the closure for this envelope. Oh, and here is the other place. She included three well, um, booking cards. You know, uh, when somebody's arrested and they're booked, the bo booking photos, that's it. And it looks like these guys were larceny and if, or charged with larceny, and if memory serves me correct, and I could be wrong because it's been a while, but I think larceny is theft of personal property. I don't even know if they still call it larceny, but I believe that's what it is. And. Heck, who knows if it's still on the penal codes, or maybe it's just theft now. Anyway, I put the beeswax on these. They were just printed on regular paper. They weren't photos. But it gave a real, I don't know, old photo-like effect to these. And I thought that was kind of cool. Tuck, tuck these bad boys back in there. I decided to keep all the, the thieves together. And the other side of that, and again, there's a pocket here too. Same idea. I can, you know, tuck something inside that pocket. And then this is that thin packing paper that had been stamped on. And then the back side of the notes and a uh, gifted piece. And here, this glassing envelope came this way, and I just added some different bits to make it a tuck spot. So it can still be used as an envelope, but it can also be used as a tuck. And the back side of that envelope in here. What I did is I because this book was so, getting so chubby, I cut this piece off. It didn't need help staying closed, so I cut that off to use as a belly band on another item, on another project, and then I just tucked in some cards and things here. This Whomping Willow she had included because she was showing me how you can take old and brittle paper and use matte laminate sheets to laminate it to make it more sturdy and this is just from one of the harry potter books which i thought was really cool and here this belly band there were three different stickers and so i peeled the stickers off and put them on just a piece of scrap and used another one of those slide mount pieces that was a die i had inked this black and then embossed it to just use as a, a belly band here and then I just tucked some more cards and notes in there, and that's the end of it. And then to hide where I cut that, I just used some of the faux vintage tape. And I had told somebody in the video that I made that um, that I in the video that I made that uh, didn't actually take because it stopped filming. I had showed how to make it, and I I will get it to the next video. I promise. I will because I will, it literally took less than a minute put down, well, I don't have the inks with me. You know what, I guess I can. All right, so this is parchment paper. You know what, let's just do it really quick on that. So parchment paper, and you can see here where I put it. And then you can use packing tape, or you can use scotch tape. And I usually use long strips, but I'll just put those down. I don't even know how well you can see them there now. And bear with me a moment. I'm going to reach over. I hope it reaches because I've got my mat. Um, oh, you know, whatever this thing is called, the microphone attached. And I've got to find the right 
inks. Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter. I usually use I usually use caramel and latte, but they don't have to. I guess I could use ginger as well. So these are alcohol inks, and I generally use these two, caramel and latte. And that's how I make my faux tape. And I'm sure there are, there's lots of videos, and I'm sure other people use different things. But all you do is you put a little bit of, oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Put a little bit of uh, alcohol ink on and smear it around a bit. And it dries. Oh, that must be the ginger because I don't use that one very often. And it dries really quickly, but just kind of smear it around a little bit. And if you're not happy with the coverage or you think it's too thick in a spot, just take a paper towel before it dries or a soft cloth or what have you. Oh, here's, here's the paper towel I lose, used last time. And you kind of just smear it around a little bit. Oh, maybe I wiped off too much, but I think that's okay. And, and then it dries and there you go. Um, I mean, it dries super quick. And there is your faux aged tape. And it, and it peels right up off the parchment paper. I don't know how well you can see that, but but there's there's the packing tape one. And it's probably already dry. And then here is the scotch tape one. And I do find that the not dollar store style uh, scotch tape or uh, cellophane tape works a little bit better. It just wraps and rolls better and it sticks a little bit. And so that's all there is to it for the faux aged tape. Okay, so I told you I was going to tell you about my squirrel. So I was working on this book, this latest idea book. After I had finished filming that and realized what I'd done, I was disappointed in myself. And I started working on pieces in this book because I, there were more ideas that I wanted to include. And I'd don't always necessarily share them all. So I had put in one of the pieces that we made on the last video. I put in this piece. I decided rather than trying to recreate it, I would just put this one that I had been gifted in there because I really like it as an idea. Glued it in. And this was a Tracy Fox idea, or at least I saw it from Tracy's in the casebook that she made, a tag with a drop-down pocket at the bottom. She used a ticket. I just used a piece of um, cardstock and folded it over and I was wanting to include that so I put that in and then just this is just a side cluster I needed black to balance so I put that in there and this one it's one I used to make fairly frequently and I haven't made in a while because I forgot and it's just a regular envelope but instead of not gluing one of the flaps you glue all four flaps down and then tear it off and then use the top as an opening so that you still have that envelope effect. So I was doing that and I put that in here and it got me to thinking and I thought, well, what if, because you know, sometimes that's what happens. And then I squirreled a little bit and made these. So rather than tearing off or gluing down that piece, I cut it off before I glued it down and I saved that extra triangle bit and glued it on the bottom to make a tuck on the top of the envelope pocket. So it's probably been done before, but I have not seen it. And I thought it was kind of a cool option with your envelopes because, you know, most of us use envelopes quite frequently. And then I decided it didn't have to just be on the bottom. It could be on the side too. So here's the envelope. This one I tore the back off to make it raggedy before, I, before gluing it down. And then I attached it to the side and just put a little bit of a, a notepad in the back because I do like to give journaling space and then a tag on the front like them so a little tuck spot and then here's a similar one without a tag if you don't want to use a tag here I just cut it off glued it onto the side and made a little book a little pam you know three hole pamphlet stitch kind of a book here tucked that in and put some vocabulary cards in instead of a tag for the front. So you could put anything small. Tea cards would be another great choice. So I thought I'd show you really quickly how to do that. And you don't have to use an envelope punch board. This one's a great one for this size project. And it tells you, it gives you the dimensions on how to make them and such. And I think one of these is square. I think maybe this one, no, it wasn't. It was this one. This one was a square. So I cut it exactly in half. Hmm, how am I going to say this? When you make envelopes, 
it, you always start with a square. And if you start exactly in the middle of that square, because you only measure for the very first one, if you start exactly in the middle, it gives you a fold that looks like this. The folds, the, the corner points match up because it gives you a square envelope. If you want a rectangular envelope like this, this one would be a rectangular envelope, you start not in the exact center. You can go a little bit above or a little bit below. So that's just something you, you know, you figure out when you play with these. Um, and that gives you end pieces that overlap rather than meeting in a point. So if I were to make this a square, I'd start exactly in the center. And if I don't want it to be a perfect square envelope, if I want it to be a rectangular envelope, I start to the right or the left of center. And that gives you that effect. And here, I'll put that back before I forget. Okay, so uh, this piece is just a little over five inches. So I will do this one, well, I don't want to put it exactly there, so I'm going to go a little bit. I'll do this at two and let's call it two and whatever that is, three eighths. Yeah, two and three eighths. No, that's too close to the center. Let's do two and a quarter. And honestly, most of the time what I'll do when I'm doing this, I'll use single sided paper and I usually use thinner paper for this just because I think it works a little better. And I like to punch on the white side because you use you use this line that you create as your guide when you're making the envelope. So you put it where you want it, you punch, and then you use the line that you score to line up with this edge piece so that you know you're in the right spot. Then you punch and score again. There's a gazillion videos on how to use these if you don't have one. And these are not a spendy item at all. I don't know, I think I got mine for five or six bucks. And it's super handy. There's quite a bit you can do with it. So this is one of those tools that I would say if you're wanting a gift, you can splurge. Okay, so you can see here now, probably, maybe you can see that the it's a rectangle rather than a square. Now, this little bit right here, if I wanted to round these edges, of my envelope, I would just tuck this in and punch, and that gives me a rounded edge. But for the sake of this project, I like the pointy edge, so I'm going to leave it pointy. All right, and this is what I've got. So then I will fold all my pieces up and in, and I don't glue anything yet because I want to look at it to decide which piece I want to cut or tear off. I'm going to fold this all the way around. Okay. Now, you can see th these words are upside down, which some people, if I leave it like this, then they're not upside down, but then these are. Some people don't mind upside down words. I really don't care for upside down words. They just don't work for me. But I could do it this way, and in fact, I think I will. So what I could do is glue, glue, glue. This is kind of sideways. And then I'll use this as my tuck. Okay, so I haven't glued anything yet. What I'm going to do now is cut off or tear, doesn't matter, this bit right here. And when I'm using pattern paper like that, I like to wait until the very end and look and see how everything lays out to decide what I'm going to cut off. And then I will ink the inside just so it's not quite so stark because the back will show. So I'll ink a little bit in here. Okay, I should have blended that better, but that's okay. Not, not a big deal, because I'm going to put something inside of it anyway, a card or a tag or some such thing. All right, and now I'll ink that edge. Okay, now I will glue and I think, and I can choose. I can have this be glued on top or this be glued on top. So I think I'll do it that way. And glue down the edges. And if you've seen this elsewhere, please feel free to tell me who you saw do it. I don't think I've seen it. Um, it was just a serendipitous thing when I was uh, putting things together in that idea book. 
But that doesn't mean maybe sometimes somewhere I may have seen something similar. I don't know. All right. And then I can choose. I can put this piece on the bottom. And I may end up doing that. I can put it on this side. Oh, that's kind of a cool effect. Or I can put it on this side. And I don't really care for it over there. So I think I kind of like it on this side. So what I do is I'll just lay this piece right here. And then I fold over. So this is the flap and I want to fold it mostly straight. Just fold over the edge. And you can see here those little wings. Maybe you can see there. These little wings, I'll just trim those off. They're not going to show, but I don't want them to I don't want them to peek out. Fold it over and I just glue it down in the back where I've created that flap because I'm going to glue this into my book. Now this wouldn't work obviously if it were a free floating envelope, but since I wanted to glue this in my book anyway, I put that piece back there. It's mostly centered. And then I put just a fine bead of glue right here, uh, just above that crease so that it acts as a tuck. And there is my tuck. So I've got my pocket in the back. I've got my tuck right here and they're glued it in the book. So I could, you know, glue three sides and have a piece back here or a piece on the side. In fact, I'd probably with this one, well, I don't know, I guess it depends on which journal I'm using it in, how I would do it. But you can glue down two or three sides. Heck, you could even make this would be a really cool belly band. Just glue the top and the bottom in the back right here and here. And then you've got a, a belly band. Or you could glue here. It would be a thin belly band the other way. So I'd probably glue the top in the back and the bottom. And then you've got a horizontal belly band. And then you've got a pocket in the back. And then you've got a tuck right here. So there you go. Okay, one more thing, and that'll I'll wrap it up for today's video. On January, no, not January, wrong month, Corey. June 28th, I've got another video with uh, Tracy's Get Your Creep On June, and I've got the little mini matchbox. And the construction of the journal that I'm making is exactly the same as this. Now, it's a little bit smaller, but it's exactly the same as the minis I'm doing. So I'm going to have lots of samples. I've got the mini from Tracy's kit to go inside the matchbox. So the same thing, just a smaller version. And then I've got a couple started using scrapbook paper, you know, the ready-made packs of scrapbook paper and ephemera and embellishments and such that you can purchase. So I've got two different kits showing you that way. And then I've got uh, the a while back in a video, I mentioned that I was using specific uh, digitals from Tracy Fox for the creation of this. So I've got that one. And I'm all, I've also got one that doesn't use a digital or scrapbook paper. It's just a random bunch of items from my, for my one of my daffodil journals because when all is said and done I've got so many daffodil pieces now that I'm going to have a box of daffodil journals different sizes different styles that kind of thing but one of them is going to be this so on the 28th is when I will release that video and it will showcase the get your creep on in that journal that I'm putting inside the matchbox but it'll also show how I construct these they're in just different sizes so there you go thank you again I appreciate you watching and I appreciate all your kind comments. I apologize that it didn't work out the way I'd intended with this journal, but um, I'm pleased that it's done and I'm, I'm pleased that I have a place to think about this whole injury journey. Thank you for watching. Take care and happy creating.